the truck inspector settings are applied to the whole truck. So for example, if I choose this synth here, the settings here will affect all the regions on that truck, so the whole truck. Now, as before, you can double click here to change the name and then click here to change the icon. But you can do that here as well. Either double click here or right click here to bring up the icons. Now, underneath that, we've got some information that cannot be changed. It is simply the number of the instrument. So if you have loaded, for example, like three instruments as I have here, each one will have its number, with number one being the first instrument that I've loaded. Now, underneath that, we've got MIDI in port. Now, you can select your MIDI port here. Off, All, and Internal and Remote. Now that will route your input for the musical typing keyboard. Remember, Command and K. And the input from Logic Remote. Now Logic Remote is an app that allows you to use an iPad or an iPhone to control certain parameters in Logic, such as bringing up the mixer on transport controls and controlling them through those devices. Now underneath that, we've got the MIDI in channel. So per MIDI device, you get 16 channels. So this is where you choose the channel that will receive MIDI information. You can have it on all, and it will receive from any channel. Now MIDI out channel is the same, but for output. So you choose the MIDI channel for the track output, either all or any of the 16 available ones. Now underneath that, we get freeze mode. Now, let's say that you are working on a very heavy project with a lot of channels and lots of plugins. Now, your CPU may crumble and you will be getting a pop-up message asking you to change the buffer size. Now, a great way to get some of that strain off the CPU is to freeze some channels. Now, when you freeze a track, Logic essentially bounces it down to an audio file. Now let's bring up the freeze button, so I'm going to press option and T as in Tango and the track components options come up. I'll check freeze, it will be added here, it's that little snowflake and if I click on that it will freeze my channel. Now as you can see we've got two types of freeze, we've got the source only and the pre-fader. Now let's do both, so I've got some plugins here on both of these. So let's do source only, prefader, oh, that works fine. So I'm going to click on that little snowflake. I'll let's do both and then hit space to freeze them. Now let's do source only. Source only will freeze my track, my regions, but it will not freeze my plugins. So I can still add plugins or access them and make changes. Now, pre-fader will, will freeze my tracks as well, so I can't move them. I'll get this message, current track is frozen, and the plugins as well, so I can't access them. And you will see that the pre-fader is green and the, so the source only is blue. Now, underneath that, we get transpose. That is the same as in the region inspector but it will be applied to the whole track. Now, as before, you can double click on it to type it, drag, or bring up the options to transpose by octave. So option and T to go back, velocity, again, same as in the region inspector, but it is applied to the whole track. Now, uh, key limit. Uh, that will only trigger notes in the selected limit. By default, it is set to the maximum, which is C minus 2 all the way up to G8. Uh, let's choose the Steinway Grand Piano and press Command 4 to bring up the piano roll and show you what I mean. So, right now, anything I click here will trigger a note. So, I can choose to trigger the notes from C2 and up. So, I can come here and drag all the way up to C2. And now anything below that will not trigger any information. Only from C2 and up. Okay, let's go back. 
option and T. Uh, velocity limit. Now this allows you to set the minimum and maximum range for your velocity. Now if you have um, if you have a region that has nodes that are, that are outside of the velocity I have set here, then they will not be played back. So anything that is below 31 or above 115 will not be played back. Option and click. We've got delay again. You can click and drag and you can choose what you want. Delay in ticks or delay in milliseconds. Option T. Now, no transpose will prevent any of the regions to be transposed, but only if you try to do it from the region inspector. Uh, for example, okay, let's bring up the region inspector. Let's double click to bring up the piano roll. So we've got this note here, which is an F. If I transpose it here, you can hear that it changes. If I click no transpose and then I transpose from the region inspector you can see that it has no effect. If I take it off it does work. So let's go back and no reset has to do with MIDI reset messages that are being sent. So if you're using MIDI controllers in a non-musical manner, let's say a mixer automation, uh, then this can be quite handy. So if you open your preferences, so that is command and comma, then go to MIDI and then go to reset messages, you get a list of all the reset messages once you press stop in Logic. Now stuff style might be confusing for my UK friends. This is stave in the UK, is where you choose how the notes would be displayed in the score editor. So depending on what you choose, you have you will have a different clef. And then underneath that, we get the articulation set. This has to do with software instruments that you can change, and you can change their articulations. Now by default, in Logic, you get the studio horns and studio strings, and you can check whatever you want. And you can also set up your own for any third party instruments that you use. So that's for MIDI. For audio, as you can see, the choices are, <laughs> the list is much smaller. Again, name, an icon as before, you get the channel number, and underneath that we get the same freeze, source only and pre-fader, and Q reference and flex mode, we will have a look at another video.